Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay, and welcome to this edition of The Ratner Report with Michael Ratner, who now joins us from New York City. Michael is President Emeritus of the Center for Constitutional Rights in New York. He's the American attorney for Julian Assange and WikiLeaks, and he's a board member of The Real News Network. Thanks for joining us, Michael. It's always good to be with you, Paul. So what have you been focusing on this week? Well, this has been a tough week this week, a tough week next week. I've really been focusing on truth tellers, uh, publishers of truth tellers, and particularly Jeremy Hammond, Bradley Manning, and Julian Assange and WikiLeaks. As I'm sure a lot of your listeners or viewers know, uh, June 3rd, Monday, begins the uh, actual trial of the Bradley Manning case, the young private first class accused of of going into government computers and uploading 750,000 or so documents to my client WikiLeaks. Uh, we'll talk about that. Last week, or actually this week, because I speak to you, a couple of days ago I was in court uh, as an observer of the guilty plea of Jeremy Hammond to hacking into a computer that's a protected computer. It was that of a company called Stratfor, a private intelligence company like a private CIA uh, that was engaged in corporate spying uh, for corporate clients. It spied on activists having to do with uh, Bhopal and trying to get Dow to to pay for them and acknowledge uh, the tragedy of Bhopal, spied on PETA. It also came out in those emails, the five million emails of Stratford, that there was a sealed indictment against my client, Julian Assange. Well, Jeremy Hammond pleaded guilty in court to one count. He had a lot of supporters in court that day, a hundred a hundred people there. Um, he had a lot of dignity about doing it. Uh, it, it is a 10-year count. The judge will sentence him on September 6th. The demand is, uh, by his supporters, that he be sentenced to time served and released. He's a political activist. He's a truth teller. Um, but it's what I call a week, both with, both with Jeremy Hammond uh, and, of course, Bradley Manning and Julian Assange, of our governments engaging in what I call sledgehammer justice. Uh, to stay for one more minute on Jeremy Hammond, uh, Jeremy did read a statement, which I recommend to everybody. Uh, the heart of the statement really says openly in public, it wasn't said in court, but it was released afterwards. Now that I have, I'm reading from Jeremy's, uh, now that I have pleaded guilty, it is a relief to be able to say that I did work with Anonymous to hack Stratford, among other websites. Those others included military and police equipment suppliers, private intelligence and information security firms, and law enforcement agencies. And then the key line in the statement, I did this because I believe people have a right to know what governments and corporations are doing behind closed doors. I did what I believe is right. So can you get a more dramatic and important statement from someone who is facing 10 years in prison and has already done 14 months? Uh, it's great. It's almost like an anthem for what we're talking about with truth tellers. So that's that. And it was, you know, it was a very sad week. In, my, in, in many ways for Jeremy, but as he said, he's glad to get now to be able to speak about what he did. But it does again show a uh, sledgehammer nature of justice. Michael, and, there's some kind of petition campaign going on? There is a petition campaign. You can go to change.org or Jeremy Hammond's support site and petition so that he gets time served. And what's important about his case is the co-defendants in his case who are in the UK, who are in Ireland, they received very small sentences compared to 10 years. They got from zero to 32 months. And so that is what we're looking at as a rule of comparison here. Jeremy Hammond ought to get time served. In my view, he's a heroic a uh, truth teller and heroic political activist. And that brings us to a second aspect, which is the Bradley Manning trial, which is coming up on June 3rd. Again, there we have Bradley Manning, who is now admitted to the reasons he uh, went into the computers of the military that he was in and uploaded 750,000 documents to WikiLeaks, including what are known as the collateral murder video, the Iraq war logs, uh, the Afghan war logs, the State Department cables, um, and many other uh, important documents. When he read his statement, he gave his political reasons for doing so, why each one um, bothered him in his conscience, and how he believed that if the American people knew what their government was doing behind their backs and the killings and murders they were engaged in, they might 
not be as willing to support that government in carrying out uh, those those crimes. Bradley Manning pleaded guilty to 20 years in prison a number of months ago. I was there, as I said, on that day. I had hoped that that would be the end of the case against Bradley Manning. He's 25 years old now. Um, think about it. He started doing this as 22. He pleaded guilty to 20 years. Get him out of jail when he's 41 or 42 years old. You would think the government would say, We've taken our pound of flesh from this truth teller. We've taken our pound of flesh from this whistleblower, from Bradley Manning. Let's get this case done with and be done with and accepted. But not this government right now. Michael, what happens in Manning's trial next week? He's, he's pleaded guilty to certain parts of this. What's actually happening next week? The government now wants to, now wants to convict him for life. And they're going to go ahead with the more serious charges and it, what's an outrage to me, I mean, just a complete outrage. I want to talk about the most serious charge and then what we're going to see happen at trial in terms of secrecy. The most serious charge is aiding the enemy. And that is normally a death penalty charge for people in the military. They've said they won't ask for the death penalty, so it's unlikely he'll get the death penalty, uh, but it is a life in prison. And it's an outrageous charge. And if I can explain it for one minute here, what it means is, aiding the enemy. What they're claiming is that Bradley Manning, by giving the documents to WikiLeaks, but he could have given Washington Post or the New York Times, as the prosecutor admitted, and he would still be, in their view, guilty of aiding the enemy. And the reason is not that the Times is the enemy or WikiLeaks is the enemy, although that's not beyond this government. It's that al-Qaeda, bin Laden, and they actually said this, uh, reads those documents. So he read or asked for documents uh, that WikiLeaks exposed that were the documents that Bradley Manning gave WikiLeaks. So WikiLeaks is the indirect way in which Bradley Manning, quote, aided the enemy. It means that every newspaper in this country could conceivably be seen as aiding the enemy when they get this information from a soldier. Think about what it does to truth-telling. You think you're ever going to get another Bradley Manning again? It's hard enough. But think about facing the death penalty, because somehow, even though you're giving it to a media uh, source, a media publisher, uh, whether it could be you, Paul, whether it could be uh, Times, you're somehow aiding the enemy. And they're going ahead with that charge. Every media person ought to be screaming. Anyway, next week on Monday, we're going to start the trial. It's going to be 12 to 16 weeks. Uh, much of it's going to be in secret. Uh, the government says they're going to put on 150 witnesses. Uh, 28 of those witnesses are going to be secret, four of them completely secret, uh, 24 of them partially secret. And let me say, the reason they're secret in most respects is because they're going to be talking about documents that you and I can read every day on the Internet, Paul. They're going to be talking about WikiLeaks documents and the documents that Bradley Manning uploaded to WikiLeaks and are now public for everybody to see. The government still considers those classified and secret, and so they never mention them in court. They never are shown in court. They don't talk about them in court. It's all going to be done in a secret part of the trial. So the whole thing is a charade. In addition to the lawsuit the Center for Constitutional Rights, my office has now, on behalf of WikiLeaks, The Nation, Jeremy Scahill, Kevin Katsola, and others, to try and open up that proceeding so that even public documents, which are now kept secret, can be given to us. So the Bradley Manning trial is really one of the most punitive trials I've seen in American history. It's one of the most secret. Uh, it's one of the most unfa unfair. That's going to go on um, for a period of time. Finishing with Bradley Manning, I mean, I would hope that everybody out there supports Bradley Manning, um, that they go to the demonstrations, visit his trial at Fort Meade, um, try and open that trial up, demand that the charges not go any further, uh, demand actually that the people who should be tried here are the people who committed the crimes uh, that both Jeremy Hammond and Bradley Manning exposed and that Julian Assange and WikiLeaks published. Think about it. They exposed huge torture scenes in Iraq, killings of, of thousands of extra of civilians in Iraq, in Afghanistan, the collateral murder video, the people that should be held accountable here are not the people who are the truth tellers and the publishers of truth, uh, but actually uh, the people who were engaged in, in war crimes, criminality, um, and really uh, incredible, incredible secret wars and corruption. Julian Assange, the third part of this, 
was obviously, uh, as the publisher and the founder of WikiLeaks, um, is now in the embassy. Um, we believe that uh, the embassy in London, um, people say, well, he's afraid to go to Sweden. Um, back, he's not afraid to go to Sweden to deal with the allegations of sexual misconduct, but because that's a one-way ticket to the United States uh, where he will be put into a prison and never, never be heard from again. Uh, our view about Julian Assange in Sweden is that the Swedish want to question him about what are allegations and not charges at this point. They ought to come to the embassy in London and do it. Or to guarantee comes to Sweden to the United States. The fact they haven't been willing to do for those is an indication to me uh, that they're trying to get a hold of him to get him uh, get him, him to the United States. Um, there's a movie that's come out of Julian Assange recently of We Steal Secrets, the story of WikiLeaks. Uh, it's by uh, Alex Gibney, who uh, is a award-winning filmmaker. Uh, the movie does not do, do justice to Bradley Manning or Julian Assange. Uh, that movie is really not worth seeing. It's not a fair movie. And I can just give you one indication from the title itself, We Steal Secrets, the story of WikiLeaks. That's implied that WikiLeaks, who's a publisher, is actually stealing secrets, which, of course, goes right into the government's theory that publishers are somehow, like their sources, uh, involved in soliciting, baiting, phishing um, co-conspirators with their sources. And there's, a re and there's a current issue on that that's come out, which is the story of James Rosen and Fox News. Uh, Fox News reporter James Rosen recently had his phone record subpoenaed uh, on the basis of the fact, as it says in the subpoena, that he was a co-conspirator or an aider and a better with his source uh, of the information he was going to reveal. Complete BS, but that's the way this government is moving. And so what I would say to Fox and others, stand up first. You should have been standing up for WikiLeaks when the government tried to claim uh, that it was a co-conspirator, and now you have to stand up for everyone. You should have been standing up major media, um, for Julian Assange and WikiLeaks, now you have to stand up for all journalists and all whistleblowers who are trying to get the truth out of government that will do everything it can to make sure that we don't know what it is doing behind closed doors. Thanks very much for joining us, Michael. Thanks for having me. Always great to be on The Real News. Thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.